folks now and welcome to the Pirate Round. And I'd be Captain Scoutipus here and this be the Scarlet Raven. And we want to say hello to all our friends who have joined us here today on this extra special episode of the Pirate Round. And this episode pertains a bit to the previous episode we did, which is about rum. And we're going to try another rum that Pi has brought us. Pi being our extra special new members, newest member of the crew. But first we're going to pour out a bit of a drink here out to the Crystal Skull. And this piece of Jamaican Mountain Red here we're going to pour out. And it'd be special rum that we only use for this occasion. Or if we have special friends that come join us. And here we go. So we say to you now friends, thank you so much for joining us here on the Pirate Round. And uh, like, share and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook. And spread the word of the Pirate Round as we slowly grow our crew. And we say thank you so much for joining us. Yar har. Yar har. Mm. Very good. Ooh, very good. So, real quick, the second international pirate rendez rendezvous in Zopek, Germany, August 7th, 8th, and 9th. And we got word the other day that uh, 2022 will be here in the United States. That's very so good. So something to look forward to. Don't know any uh, details on that yet. Uh, we're waiting to hear back from uh, Festivals des Pirates and um, the Seconds des Mars. Merci beaucoup, by the way. Merci beaucoup. To, uh, Bonjour. To them. And um, they will be giving us uh, some more information as it comes out. True. Now, you know that we have certain members of our crew, and of course Pirate be the, young, uh, the newest member. Now... Here we have... No, we're not forgetting about you, Ben. Not yet. So here we have in our crew, I want to introduce them. We have Anne Barney. Uh, she's the one with the feathers in her hat right there. That'd be Anne Barney on the very end. And this be Bartholomew Roberts. He's one with the fine hat with the skull and crossbones on it. And here we have Bill G, our bilge rat. And he brings us rum quite often. And Bill G, he's of course a very valuable member of our crew. He guards the rum right there on the rum cask. And, of course, here we have Gunner's Mate Squash. Uh, he's so strong, he can handle the big cannon. And here be Polly Pirate Parrot. The one-eyed parrot. The one-eyed parrot. Eye. Now, you uh, folks probably know how Polly lost her eye. Well, she had too much rum to drink and was chasing a parrot, uh, chasing a pigeon there, up amongst the ribbing, uh, rigging of the ship there and ran into the yard arm and took her eye out. So... Now, Pirate, of course, uh, wanting to fit in, and of course, this be her little cannon that she has that she That's uses. Right. And this is her little sniping cannon. Uh, you'll be up on deck causing a fracas, and all of a sudden you hear this thing go boom, and you'll be hitting the side of the head with a little cannonball from this. What? Which is really strange because uh, she's, got, big she's balls. got big balls on the pirate. For on a the female cannon pirate, she's got the biggest balls of them all. Look at that. There. Two of them. And they knock, they knock together and from side to side. Isn't that something? Now, what in the world has Pirate brought us today? What is this? Oh, look at that. Ah, I think Pirate likes this. So, folks, in the past we've done uh, a rum called Baku. And Baku is from the Dominican Republic, which be a fine island down there in the Caribbean. And uh, Baku... Uh, is they have it aged in various years. So we've done the five, five year aged. We did that last time, and now this is the eight. We've done the twelve, and we've done the twelve, and this be the eight. So um, each Baku is aged in oak, and it's it's uh, it says here grown, produced, and bottled in the Dominican Republic. Cane juice, uh, cane juice, uh, fine cane juice and uh, unleash the spirit, which, of course, the Baku is like a genie right. in a bottle that you find in bottles that float up on the beach. Right. And they want to unleash the spirit. So, um, typically, the Baku-type rums are very, are very high quality. And I, I, can, I can say from the past experience that they tend to be a little drier, which makes them very good mixers. So, uh, why don't you pour us out a bit there, Scarlet Raven? And we'll have a little bit of a taste. Well, the, the Bakus actually have a real cork stopper. They do. A real cork stopper and a real cork cap, which is kind of nice. Right. It's very nice. Right. I'll see if the, the genie's still in this bottle. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, 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 look out, it went. Oh, we'll never get it back in. Pai's already made a wish on it. Well, Pai's probably should have. Got, got the... I don't I'll make a wish anyway. Okay. We make one. Okay. All right. Pour me out a bit. That's fine. Let me take a look at there. Well, you oh, know... It's getting mighty low. Yeah. It's I like this bottle. The bottle's kind of fun. It's got this kind of weaving it's batch on the cross bottom. The cross hatch. Yeah. You know... Uh, That's dark. I didn't realize how dark that oh, was. Cool, That's dark. It's, it's aged it's, in the oak for a while. It's got a nice color. Yeah, nice dark it does. Nice coloration. Yeah, let's move and the Jamaica Mountain here for a minute and we'll get it up What's the alcohol by volume on that? I, uh, think, that's, I think it's a 40, just like the, the others. Uh, let's see here. Aged in oak. Uh, 750 milliliters. Now we've used this quite a bit in mixers. Oh yes, this is 40% yeah. too. So it's a bit of a warmer rum. A lot of rums tend to be about 37% or so. Or a lot of 40s that we've And we've there's done. quite a few 40s. Now the challenge of course with warmer rums is, is to make them taste very mellow. Oh, look at that. There's a fight going on here along the coast. A black party and a ship of the line fighting it out. Right. We'll see who's going to win later on. So. Are we ready to have a taste test? Let's have a now this first. one has a little bit sweeter smell than the five that we, we did. Yeah, you can sure you can sure smell the but cane juice. But it kind juice of burns the nose just a little bit. You can smell the cane juice. It's quite sharp, isn't it? The very molasses yes. very molassy smell. Molassey. Molasses. Look at that nice dark. Mm. Very nice. So friends, this be Baku 8, and we wish you were here to join us. But if you're not, then you can be here in spirit. And we say to you, friends, your har and, and spirit. Get it, get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we say smooth sailing. So let's have a sip. So got the burn on the tongue, swishing around. In fact, it it burns a little bit up here. Yeah, it does. It's a little sharp. <clears throat> The flavors there, <clears throat> the thing about Bakus is they're typically a dry rum, mm -hmm. and so you don't have the sweet back that comes out. So oh. you're tasting that oak in there, that's quite strong. It's, it's got the dryness, a little bit more sweet. It's out here a bit. I don't find that it's much sweeter. I find it, it it's burns just a, a bit it just, more. Yeah, it does burn, but it's just yeah. a hair bit sweeter. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I, um, the Bakus tend to be very high quality. Uh, very, uh, they're drier and they're good mixers. I guess that's one of the strengths of Bakus, is you can sip them uh, as a fine sipping rum, but you know their strength, because they're a bit drier and less sweet, is, is their fine mixing rums uh, for making a nice grog. Second your heart? Your heart. Yeah, not quite as smooth as some of the other ones we've had. No. I've got to be honest. It's very I think, oaky. I think of the three Bakus, I think the 12 is definitely my favorite. Yeah, and it would make sense that they would age in progression, but I almost think that this is a little harsher than the 5. Right. I remember when we first found the 12, we went in, in some place and it said, New Try Me. Yeah, it had a little thing on it that said New Try Me, and it had a little genie on the side. Or it had a little tag. Yep. It's not bad. Now, we've used this in mixers. Now, you can tell we've used quite a bit of it. Of course, I think pie has gotten into it, too. Yeah. Well, all our rats get in the rum, and so do the bears. Um, I don't know. You know, I, uh, we use it so I wouldn't, much... I wouldn't kick it to the curb. No, I wouldn't either. We use it so much as a mixer, it's difficult for me to talk about it as just a sipping rum. Right. Now, the mixer we're talking about is our favorite, Bartholomew Roberts Piratey punch. punch. Which, of course, pirates love their punch. Right. Typically a rum and a fruit juice mix, and that's what our punch is. Right. Too. It has, now, two shots of rum. Two. Usually we use pirate, but we, we use, sometimes we use baku or other. True. It has four shots of a, bla a blueberry pomegranate juice. Usually Arcane Utsens is our favorite. And that would be the punch part of it with the, the punch, fruit juice. Right. 
kind of gives you the sweet. And then we use five shots, sometimes a little bit more, of uh, Canadian dry yep. ginger ale. Five. Five. And then half of a line squeezed. And I like a little pulp in mine. The captain doesn't like the pulp in his. I don't like pulp, no. So, folks, when you're thinking of a Black Bear's Piratey Punch, or Bartholomew Roberts? Bartholomew Roberts Piratey Punch. It used, to be, Roberts. It, it used to be called Black Bear's Pirate Revenge, but because there was already a drink called Black Bear, well, Bartholomew Roberts requested that, yeah. that it have his name. The Bartholomew and, you know, Roberts. Why does it get the name Bartholomew Roberts? Well, of course, Bartholomew loves his rum. And he his loves berries. loves his berries, and yeah. it's got blueberries. Yes, sir. So, remember this, folks, that you have two, four, five, half, and squeeze. And then you get everything you want. That's right. And ice. Stir it up. Lots of ice to keep you cool on a hot day. Oh, so good. It's not a bad rum, but I definitely wouldn't kick it to the curb, but it's not one no. I, would, I would, you know. I would, it's not my favorite. I would uh, buy on a regular basis. Now, you know, i got to keep chasing it with a bit others, uh, you know, because being 40%, it's got that back throat burn. It's got more so than the five. Yeah, and it it's odd because the five didn't quite didn't burn quite as much as this, but it's got it's got a bit of that back throat burn. That's not that quite pleasurable. No, um, it makes a good mixer. I don't think I would pull this out like I would the say the Kirk and Sweeney twenty three, or the XO the the Plantation XO. I don't think I'd pull it out and pour it from my friends and say, hey everyone, let's sit down and have a nice. Uh, a nice a dram of this fine yeah. aroma and talk about what happened today and in the world and the many things that we've done. Uh, this is a little burning. And I'm not saying burning. It's a little burning. Uh, because it, it's just a little bit uh, that you catch it on the back of your throat and in your sinuses. Don't you think that's Scarlet Ray? I do. And I still feel that tingle on the tongue. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that it, dryness. That dryness is definitely yeah. still there. Well, dryness, of course, makes it a good mixer. But the tingle, not so much. Uh, the tingle, uh, that which uh, too much alcohol, uh, it, it detracts from the flavor and the smoothness of the rum. So, that yeah. third or fourth yarha, I'm not quite sure. Down the hatch. <sighs> Got to chase it. <clears throat> it's not that pleasurable to drink straight. We've you know, got between the five and the eight, which one do you like better? Well, the five, I wouldn't think that the five would be smoother, but it is. Yeah. The eight is a bit harsher. I don't know why. Maybe it's oxidized in the bottle? So I would I would probably still give this a three. It would be on the low end of a three. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, if I had to give it like a percentage of like 3.1, where yeah. the five would be like a 3.3, three, this would be a flat three. You know, I gave the five um, a three and a half because I felt it was a really good mixer. It's a very dry rum. But there's a harshness to this eight. I, I cannot lie. i got to be honest about it. I, if given the chance to go into the store and buy a good mixing rum, I would probably come out with the 12 or the five and not the eight. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I mean, something you could give as a, as a gift to someone and say, Look, it's not the best, but give it a try. And unleash the spirit. Unleash the spirit and try it and see what you think. You know, mix it up with your favorite mixers and you'll still have a good drink when you mix it. That's right. Um, but when you pour it out in straight to, with your friends, probably not the best idea to do that. Unless you've got friends who are real tight rum connoisseurs who are used to drinking stronger rums. Yeah. Not a bad rum, but not the best not the best. Yeah, I give it about three. Uh, where I gave the other three and a half, I give it an, I give it an even three uh, uh, cannon blasts. And the reason I do that is because generally uh, the Baku rums are very high quality and they're very good mixers. And we've had rums on here before that would make horrible mixers because they're yes. either too sweet or they've got this like caustic aftertaste that just makes you want to puke. Or we've had some that taste so much you don't want to mix them with anything. Yeah. You just want to drink them straight. Cool. So, there you go. Baku 8-year. Uh, no offense to the Baku company. You've done a great job. You produce a great product. 
But we've got to be honest with you folks, uh, not the best. No. So there you go. So folks, that be the end of this episode of the Pack Round. We go ahead and pour out... <coughs> Holy crap! Yeah. It was a burn there. Yeah, that's a burn. It comes back on you. Careful of that. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Pi. You get the rest. <coughs> Folks, we want to thank you uh, for joining us on the Pi Round and for uh, watching this episode. Scarlet Raven, what episode do you think this would be? How many is going to be? I think it'll probably be 63 or 64. Oh, my goodness. And who would have thought that a year ago when we first started, we've gone to 64 episodes? Yeah, a little bit more than, little Isn't bit that more than a year. Right. You know, every time I open a bottle like this and I get to wish, my wish, of course, is to be with the Scarlet Raven for the rest of my life. And likewise. And uh, I don't have really any other wish besides that. It's just to be with her. Now, a comment that we got on the Pirate Round, and I had to agree with this fellow. He's like, you guys are a great thing, and you deserve more followers. And we wish that were true. So, if you think that we need more followers, spread the word. Spread please. the word. Like, share, comment. Yarr. Uh Tell your friends. Tell anybody you know. Anybody in the pirate community about Yarr. the pirate round. You know, uh, we we don't do anything. We don't make money on this. You know, there are some some YouTube channels. Maybe eventually, once we get ten thousand followers, <laughs> everything you see here, folks, make, came out of our pocket. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Everything. everything and, and, everything and I does. ain't lying with the exception of we've had <laughs> one sponsorship of a giveaway yeah uh, by a great company Firelock Games Firelock Games like thank you Mike Mike and Alex both yes thank you Mike uh, and Alex you know we, we don't get sponsorships for no. this we, we, everything that we do is, is on our own yeah. and uh, you know if we ever did get the uh, the amount of followers that we need then I tell you what we'd be doing we'd be we'd be traveling we'd be using that money to be traveling to do more piracy stuff we it would. would be going back into yeah. this it wouldn't be making a living like some people do no we would be exploring a lot of pirate history we'd be going to old forts and old ships and old battle sites and old historical areas and doing live episodes and recordings because you know we love pirates we love pirate history and all that sort of thing and that's what we would do right so folks thank you so much for joining us here on this episode I be this. I be uh, Captain Scarlet Puss here. This be the Scarlet Raven. And folks, I want to say now in these troubled times, don't let anyone make you afraid. Use your noggin and think your think your way through, and don't panic. And I want everyone here to be strong, be true to themselves and their family and friends, and always be a pirate. And Star stormy weather is ahead. Stormy weather is ahead, know, folks. You, but let's wear smart. it. Yes, but let's weather it. You know. And folks, don't let anyone ever grind you underneath their boot heel. You be a dang pirate, and you don't have to take shite from no one. And I say to you now, smooth sailing, be strong, be a pirate, and you're hard. You're hard. Holy crap, that was coming up on me. Yeah. Woo! Burp. Yeah, that was not a good burp. Okay. Um, let's do a little experiment with the lighting. With okay. this next one, um, let's keep your eye on that. Um, keep your eye on that screen. Now, let me turn off the big ones and okay. see what kind of a shadow effect we get. You want to do it in in old film or? Yeah, I do. Okay. That Let me change that to old film then. Where's that switch? There it is. Oh, I can't do it while it's recording. Go ahead and stop.